The IM's uh, water boat from Kashmir. Uh, Michael Tracy has brought out a darkness in me that didn't exist before. I intend to pick on him all week. Hopefully it triggers oh, some on. memories from come high on. school for him. Yeah, ex- come on. What and- character from the movie Ice Age is written to be a schmuck? If Michael Tracy reminds me of Sid the Schmucky Sloth, then you're, you're get you guess right. Hashtag be best, everybody. Come yeah, on. Hashtag everybody be best. best. And also, even if Although, you don't want to be best, can I just say I am not entire. He might crave this on some level. So just knock it off. That's true. He might. And so to help him with that, let's just play this one clip because I thought this was actually pretty funny. Um, he has uh, been on a quite a tear on uh, Twitter. And um, I thought this was uh, funny. Now, of course, I've made it quite clear uh, and, and folks who listen to the show on a regular basis that um, I'm not uh, particularly happy with w- the direction that uh, MSNBC has, has clearly gone really for two, two and a half years. I mean, even prior to the investigation or maybe just leading up to it. Um, I think when I got fired and rehired, I think uh, I'm on record as saying, it, which has been basically public record, that they have basically been hiring a lot of uh, Republicans and, um, you know, uh, in many respects, hacking to the, to the, to the right. I think, um, you know, covering uh, the investigations to the extent that they do is... You know, uh, in part, I mean, yeah, but in part, it's also a aside from it being a huge ratings boon, also a um, something you can do that without being particularly political. Um, you know, an investigation is an investigation. And we don't like all of the military industrial complex people on MSNBC either. Yeah, of course. I mean, it used to be owned by General Electric. It's not like, like it's that a new, either. <laughs> it's not like it's a new. And all of the problems are symptomatic, not caught. I found this to be somewhat ironic because um, I've been following Tucker Carlson's career for 20 some odd years. And um, back in the day um, when I was a comedian and a sitcom actor and a sitcom writer, my friend Janine Garofalo, uh, as you know, uh, was recruited to go on to television and talk about um, talk about uh, why we shouldn't go to war in Iraq. And one of the shows that had her on a lot was Crossfire. And um, she became sort of friendly with uh, with with Tucker. I think they would um, would uh, would smoke a lot of cigarettes together back in the day. Like outside of the uh, CNN uh, booth, you know, in between, and I think, um, and um, oh well, let's yeah, let's Sorry, put that. In. Okay, so uh, but here is um, here is one exchange that they have between uh, the the two. And Carlson says, "I respect the opinion of many who disagree with the idea of war in Iraq." That was back in uh, just I think right up. I don't know if that was. Um, Let's see, March 10th, 2003. So that is right either at the start of the war, it's just within days of it, uh, probably days away from the the bombing. Um, And, you know, I'm a little bit offended, he said, by the by the uh, constant descriptions of motives that President Bush must have. This is all for the oil companies. It's to avenge his father, this sort of stupid kind of cycle babble. President says in the end he's doing this because he thinks Saddam Hussein is a threat to the United States. Do you believe that? And then he goes down to talk about how there's proof that Saddam Hussein is training Al Qaeda, folks. Um, yeah, that here was, it is. That was a, of the all the not proofs. That was this a lot is, of uh, not proofs. This is from proof. Thursday, February twentieth, two thousand three. I don't know if you have an image of that. But I will read uh, from the transcript again with Janine Garofalo, oddly enough. You know why they brought Janine on, right? Because of her expertise in foreign policy. No. And Janine would be the first person to say, then and now. They would call her and they'd say, well, why don't you put on this uh, professor or this um, activist? No, we want you. So that we can uh, make it like the only people who are uh, in any way arguing against this war are actors 
or no, excuse me, actresses. Hollywood liberals. Exactly. Um, well, then perhaps you can answer this question. Why is the head of the CIA, the Secretary of State, National uh, Security Advisor, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, all said we have seen evidence that there are members of al-Qaeda living in Baghdad? There was an agreement between al-Qaeda and Saddam. Are they making it up? Oh. Tucky, tuck, tuck, tuck. Tuck it to tuck, 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 tuck. Wow. I hope he's re reminding us of his own foibles when he ruthlessly exposes the nonsense of the Russia covered. Um, and he goes, uh, let's see. A very quick off the top of the head of this is uh, why. What is Iraq done to us? Attempted to assassinate an American president. Allowed terrorists harbored to in Iraq to kill an American diplomat just last year in Jordan. Apparently signed an agreement with Al Qaeda. Trained Al Qaeda wet members in the use of chemical and biological weapons. This guy got it so wrong. I don't remember exactly why I'm bringing this up. Oh, wait a second. Let's just go to the tape. Uh, where Michael Tracy is explaining what is really at uh, the, the heart of this whole Russia gate that is so offensive to him. The point is that this Trump Russia story is a media failure of comparable magnitude, less death. Oh, pause it. I'm sorry. Uh, he's saying comparable magnitude to uh, weapons of mass destruction in the lead up to Iraq. And, and to his credit, re rewind it here, he does say, but less deaths significantly less deaths i think i would add like hundreds of thousands of less deaths maybe maybe million maybe a million less deaths but whatever i don't know less deaths be a failure of comparable magnitude less death thankfully but just as much just total inability total factual indiscretion yes. and i, I feel yes. like something similar is going to happen where the people who were proven decisively wrong and have were proven to have deceived the American people for two plus years. Now we're approaching three years, actually. They're not going to pay any any price. They're not going to face any consequence. If you or I or normal people failed at their job miserably, <laughs> they would probably I don't know get demoted, maybe even fired. They would suffer some kind of reputational consequence. But Pause it. so maybe they'd get Pause or it. maybe they'd get a nice prime time show. We don't even have to uh, perform a hypothetical in this situation. Because if you or I and the you is Tucker Carlson, and, and keep it up because we're going to go, but the you is Tucker Carlson, what would happen if he engaged in something like this that led to the much more deaths? Hundreds of thousands, maybe million deaths. Well, of course, what he would do is be able to host you on television <laughs> and have been on television almost the entire time. There was a brief time where he had to start his own company called The Daily Caller. So we don't need to hypo hypothesize this. It's amazing that we can see this type of reaction from Michael Tracy about all of these people. And he may or may not be right about them. Even if I stipulate that he's right about them, it makes it even worse. That he's going on to this show. But of course, it must be from the purest of intentions because, of course, he is the most righteous. He has the truth. He has known the truth all along. This is all part of his grand plan. And we must just sit back and let it wash over us. They would probably, I don't know, get demoted, maybe even mm -hmm. fired. They would or suffer some kind of reputational consequence, but not so for the Posit media elite. The, also, the best part is the stone face <laughs> on Tucker Carlson. One wonders what's behind those eyes as he doesn't even blink. I wonder if he's going through, I hope no one has Google. I hope no one remembers. Oh my God, you really are kind of a fucking idiot. <laughs> Go. Reputational consequence, but not so for the media elite who have been leading the charge of the story, who had a lot of influence on these security state officials like Andrew McCabe, who launched 
the uh, one of the investigations into Trump at the FBI. You know, listen to Andrew McCabe on his recent book tour. It almost sounds like he's a devoted reader of David Frum at the Atlantic, who's from, you know, he worked for George W. Bush. He helped coin the axis of evil phrase. He was a leading advocate for the Iraq war. He's also a leading advocate of Russiagate. There's a lot of crossover there. And, you know, <laughs> but you know, Andrew McCabe seemed like he was just T- you know, scrolling through Twitter or like reading the New York Times or something, you didn't have any what? privileged information that we know of that led him to launch these unprecedented investigations into the well, democratic well, so that, elected a, president. I, yeah. <clears throat> Play the other clip, I would say. What's uh, the, the other one clip? I just sent? Okay, because I think that this is very. This is actually more honest and a lot more rigorous than spreading the nonsense about Al Qaeda being trained by Saddam, even though like they were absolutely on different but sides of the equation politically. This is this is after the fact. Oh, this is way. But after this the is fact. this is Tucker's version of owning up to his mistakes. Ah, I see. That's is how it, I would say. And now, is this? Um, w- do you know when this video was? I just want to know if it was. I it was I'm published in 2007. It's a bit earlier. I'm just curious Bush if it's still in before office. or after the time that he said that uh, Iraqis were. What did he say in that tape that we played recently? This Dogs. Is before. Um, semi-literate primitive monkeys. Okay. Yes. Yeah, semi-literate priv- primitive monkeys. Okay. All right. Finally. Alan Greenspan says in his book that, yeah, of course, this war is about oil and et cetera, et cetera. And he said that to someone at the White House who said, we're not allowed to talk about oil. I think this war should have been about oil. I wish it was about oil. Does everybody remember what I just read in that transcript? Exactly. Where he was mocking uh, Janine Garofalo uh, three or four years earlier for saying it's about war. You crazy Holly weird. Psychic projection. It's about Al-Qaeda. Psychic projection. Should have been about oil. I wish it was about oil. We've got to have lower gas prices. Why would the Bush administration say to him, we can't talk about oil as we prosecute this war? The deeper question, I know we're at time. I just... I don't know why. What would be wrong with having a war over oil? We have that's a strategic. I mean, that's that's in our strategic interest. What what would be? I mean, that is that the whole point of war is to advance our interest. No, I know. There you go. Whatever. Uh, definitely, definitely. And now, to be fair, I'm sure when Michael Tracy goes on that show, um, he has been able to convince a couple of the Fox viewers that uh, this whole Russia thing was a hoax. <laughs> so at least he's getting out there with the word and uh you know doing it because um it's uh it, and repairing the body politic as it were which i think was one of the one of the issues was that what the it, other burden sure of the really story is having body to call it, use the phrase body politic right. on ironically i my metric now <laughs> is really simple it's like if you if michael tracy went on fox and pivoted steadily to the Iran deal uh, and the consequences of Trump destroying that, then no problem. He wants to go there and trash the Russia thing. That's my trade-off. When, but I haven't seen any videos of it. <laughs> like a wild hypothetical. Yeah, uh, well, that's actually the sad point, right? It is a wild hypothetical. Totally. No one's done that. Of course not. The whole thing is just a parable for when alt-left con- uh, contrarianism goes wrong. And when, and I will say, I read a piece about, the New Yorker did a piece on Tucker Carlson, uh, I think in either the summer of 2017, uh, maybe. And what was funny is he actually implied in that piece, I think in, retrospect very shrewdly to the person covering him for the new yorker he's like you know i have a different view of iran than a lot of other conservatives and you're you're going to start we're going to see what it's going to be like how fox viewers respond when i start doing like more nuanced presentations of iran essentially that never happened but it did give him some juicy well, new yorker profile quotes for the people reading that to, to be, be like fair, oh, that's interesting to be fair if you go back and look at the um the stories he was doing when he launched the daily caller it was to revive actual journalism on the in right. 2009 he said we need to do stories like the new york times does and we can't be in our own cognitive bubble paraphrasing <laughs> But of course, I don't think to circle so. every square, he got booed at CPAC, I believe, when he said that. So yeah, everything is everything.